Maggie Bat, and I am vlogging from a new house. Um, I moved this past weekend or so, um, and it is Christmas morning right now. Happy Christmas, everyone. Um, I don't personally celebrate much, but because everyone has the day off, you know, you always have stuff to go and do. I'm going to go spend some time with this family of awesome, amazing people I met through work. And then I'm going to go to dinner with my Geek Girl Con family, and then I'll spend the evening uh, with a co-worker and dear friend. And uh, my new roommate also is a co-worker, which is kind of fun. Uh, I haven't had a roommate in a long time, but it, it should be fine. We get along really well. It's nice that I know him and he knows me and, you know, everything will be fine. Um, so yeah, I'm settling on in. The new house is um, really great so far. It's kind of perfectly located. It's in the same neighborhood I used to live in, and it's equidistant from everything I used to go to, and just a couple blocks off the main drag here, so I'm pretty excited, actually. I'm getting pretty okay with the idea of being here for a while, which would be really nice, because I hate moving, so, um, sorry. Uh, games. Uh, so it is true that um, one nice thing about kind of being done moving is that I've had a little bit of time to play some games. I spent the last four days in a row with game plans and um, very quickly trying to catch up and get kind of back in my old rhythm. Um, I did get to play Oracle Delphi twice this week, which is great because I had only played it once before that. And I have a copy from Tasty Menstrual to get a review done for, and I've got some thoughts and some some things to talk about. Um, I still quite like it. I think um, Feld said to himself, well, what happens if I want a racing game? And so he made an objective racing game, which I think is a great in-game trigger. I think it's a really fun, undervalued in-game trigger. So um, I th I will have that recorded probably after two more plays, probably. But I do have some thoughts, and I've got, you know, my normal thing. It's, uh, it's a feld, but it's not a feld that has to be like every other feld. It is more like the aquasphere side of things where you really need to be efficient and plan and take your time and um, come up with a couple of different scenarios because people won't be able to get in your way, really, so you can only get in your own way, which is the kinds of games I don't do very well at. I'm much better at getting in other people's way, like Kanban. Uh, so I'm, I'm excited about that one. I hope you guys have tried it and played it. Um, played two, two new games very, very recently. Today I played my first game of Dinamot 2. Uh, then I watched you second edition was kickstarted very recently. Um, I had to wait for my copy. It took a really long time because it shipped with North American Rails, which I now have and haven't played yet. But um, so I know a lot of people have already gotten their copy and they're playing, playing it. But um, it's a pretty interesting little game. Uh, you basically have your action selection up at the top, and it's kind of a unique way of timing your actions. You know, this whole board that populates with ocean tiles and islands, and um, you get either cubes or you get fish or treasure or whatever. And the bottom here, those are characters that each round you get one very similar to the bonuses in Terra Mystica. Um, the game is quite light, and I, we did ourselves a disservice that we played it at three players, because that's what we had today, not realizing the game is not built for three players. Um, I definitely want to try it at five. Um, so the whole deal is that you have uh, five workers, you place them two, two, one. So you're on the table, and everyone puts out two, and then two more, and then one more. Then, starting with the start player, you can take any action as long as you have the majority of the workers there. So if there are two workers and one worker, the person with the two could remove those workers and take that action. And if you can't do that, if none of your spaces that you put actions on uh, have the most, you actually have to remove one of those actions from the board and just not take it. Um, there is also an element where if you are tied for first, the person closest to the start player is the tiebreaker. And the tie and the being last in this game 
is the pits. Being first is everything. And even in our third three-player game, it was really, really, really important to uh, have first choice of things. And um, it's almost a little surprising that there's no, um, when you first start the game, and the start player is assigned, and there's no compensation for people who get further down in the initiative. So um, we definitely felt that that maybe was something that would have happened if it was being designed today. Um, either that or the first player marker, instead of taking an entire action to take that, if the first player were to just pass around the table to the left every turn, I think that might be slightly better too. Um, so Vanuatu is beautiful and very, very mean. Uh, it's all about your timing and stuff. The actual actions themselves are pretty straightforward. You pick up a treasure, you sell it, or you keep it for points. And if you pick up a fish, you then later have to take a sell a fish action. And uh, you have to be adjacent to the islands you want to manipulate. Um, it's pretty darn, pretty darn easy. Yep. Um, the other big game that I learned and have played twice now is Railroad Revolution. You can see my copy is still in its shrink wrap, which is sad. Um, it will be busted out soon, but uh, Railroad Revolution is a two to four player what's your game game. Um, these designers, if I'm not mistaken, did Zangwo or Zangao, or I don't know how to say that word, previously for what's your game, which is one of those games that I try and tell people is like lightning, you know, it has a mechanism that I've never seen in another game, which is so cool when that happens. Railroad Revolution does not have that lightning mechanism. It doesn't have anything that other games don't have. Um, it has action selection with a couple of different choices. However, it is so very quick. Um, our two-player game, non-learning, was 30 minutes. And our four-player or three-player learning game with a teach in it was still just like an hour ten. Um, you Each turn you're just going to take an action, and depending on the color meeple you use, you might have a secondary action. Well, you, you do have a secondary action, and you try and build on the board. And as soon as someone gets rid of almost all their pieces, so it's all but four of them, uh, triggers the last round, you go to equal turns plus one round, and then you score the points. And it's, I was worried, but we played our first game, and we did extremely well. So two of us broke 300 points, no problem. And we felt that, I felt that maybe the strategies were a little too easy to complete, and it was going to be kind of a weird game with tie breaks and stuff once we got playing it. And then I played this two-player tonight, and it zoomed by, and we ended up at about 200 points. And I'm realizing now more and more that the two plays that I have really stuck in my brain, and I'm just, like, thinking about how to play this game and how it's going to be, um, I think in the same class for me as Glenmore, where I could put that in a bag to show people that maybe don't play Euros yet or are interested in getting into Euros, and I would I would totally introduce someone to the hobby with that game. And um, there's not that many games I would do that with, so if, if someone wanted to get into Euros, I would show them something like a Railroad Revolution to kind of get their wheels turning. It's short enough where the time won't be the thing that they have to pull back from it. Should be that they get to see and focus on the strategy and all these beautiful rules. Um, the game itself is not my favorite aesthetically. I think they're that what's your game could really use someone to come in and beautify their games. Their covers are always really beautiful, but the games itself, the actual game board is hideous. And this one is bright yellow. So it's not, not, not cute. Um, they also use iconography similar to like a like a train game. I, I, I know that there's a train in this game, but it's not a train game at all. This game is not a train game. This game is not a train game. But they use the like minus 400 plus 100. If it costs $400, it's going to say minus $400 on on the line. And if you get a discount of $100, it's going to say plus $100. And... I've seen that before, and it's not my favorite. It's not my favorite kind of iconography, and it doesn't remind me of those actions or benefits very easily. 
And maybe that's just me, maybe that's just my problem, but uh, Railroad Evolution is so fabulous. Uh, I really had a good time. Um, I've continued also, uh, I taught some more Nuremberg. Uh, I taught it at um, Mox Boarding House, which is one of the places I work, and uh, two kind of or three, three friends of mine, close friends of mine were, were there playing with me and I ended up selling another copy of it while, while we were playing because every single time I bring that game out with a new group, I usually sell a copy of it. It's so, so smart and good and just solid. I just wish that like someone would at least put it on Game Surplus or Fun Again or something. Maybe I should ask them if they could import some copies of that because it's just so good. It's so fun. Um, and that's not an economic game from Andrea Stedding. And so, it, I mean, as soon as you say this is the designer of Haunts of Teutonica, a lot of people will play it. That I mean, that's enough. He has so few games. Um, it's kind of like William Adia, where you just want him to des design more. Um, and I liked Stiff for Dynasty. I liked a lot. So uh, I think he's got some really interesting ideas and really cool mechanisms he's goofing around with. And I hope to see more games of his. But Nornberg is always really fun. And then I played some Capital Lux this week. And I played... Uh, that was probably about it. Um, it's been quite fun so tomorrow i expect i'll play some lighter fare um maybe like party light games but um it's with people i don't know that well so it should be interesting anyway um i hope you all are well it's just a quick good night vlog but it's nice to see you and um you should be seeing me more soon bye